can maybe form, but it won't prosper. When darkness falls, I know it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. No, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. And I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And you take with the enemy land for evil. And you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Mm -hmm. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Yes, I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Melinda. That uh, th that's a good good reminder. The <laughs> the battle belongs to the Lord. The the battle that uh, that is our uh, that, that that is our primary battle. Um, I invite you all to be uh, in the spirit of prayer uh, with me this morning. Holy One, this has been quite a week. We greet you this morning as those who experienced a good deal of emotion waiting, watching, hoping, dreading. Some resolution has been reached. Happy news for some, unhappy news for others. And we know that the story is far from finished. As history unfolds in the public sphere, we still have our daily lives. Our daily lives of earning income, of caring for family, cultivating health, finding self-worth, trying to catch a breath. 
for our public and our personal lives, we beckon your presence this morning, holy God. Remind us that we dwell in your affirmation and breathe in your indefatigable love. Nurture us in grace and freedom. Bend us away from selfish ambition and strife toward unity. Deepen our appreciation of creation, of each other, and of you. Keep us close, for the battle belongs to you. And keep us in your light. This we ask in the name of the one who names us and gives us life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dave. And now is the time for announcements. Uh, today, following our online worship gathering, the new parents group are going to hold their first meeting. Woohoo! And that's at 1130 a.m. And I want you to get this. Nine. Nine sets of parents with babies and toddlers are involved thus far for a time of discussion, encouragement, and community. A huge thank you to Jace Lucas and Beth Mueller for providing the initial leadership for this group. They've done a magnificent job in organizing this effort. Let's give them some thanks. And uh, yes, thanks too to Janet Bungie, plus Rev Dave for his oversight with Harmony's Children Ministry. There's some exciting times, y'all, exciting times. Tomorrow evening is our next Courageous Conversations and the marvelous Melinda Hale will lead the conversation focusing on pressing for justice post-election. Deep breath, everyone. And all are welcome. That's via Zoom at 7.30 p.m. And that info is on our website, uh, harmonytl.org, as well as our public page on Facebook at HarmonyTL. Now, we have other offerings that are offered by Harmony. And so please take advantage of these as you're able. Again, info is on the website on uh, social media. So here's one thing not listed yet that's happening this coming Saturday, November the 14th. And this is going to make for a Saturday double outreach. I got a call from Pastor Bridie. She's in Arizona and she called me and this is about a Burbank food distribution for the American Federation of Musicians Local 47. It's a drive-through distribution from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, which will have appropriate protocols in place for volunteers. And this summer, I did several food distributions like this one, and the experience is extremely rewarding. And so if you're interested in participating, please let Pastor Bridie know, uh, let me know, but Pastor Bridie is a great go-to. Volunteers will need to arrive a couple hours earlier. Uh, email Pastor Bridie at hollywoodumc.org. It would be great to have representation from Harmony. And the other Saturday outreach that we uh, just announced is we have compassion bears. Yes, people, the pandemic is not standing in our way as these cuddly teddy bears are at the ready for you to pick up and decorate. This coming Saturday, uh, I'll be at the Harmony campus from 12 noon to 2 p.m. So drive by, pick up a bear or two, or hey, even three. That said, we're looking to offset costs this year. So if you're able to contribute $5 per bear, that would be helpful. However, if money is an issue, don't let that hold you back from getting a bear. We'd rather these bears be loved and dressed than not donated to the children under the care of USC's 5P21 clinic. So let's brighten the holiday season for these youngsters living with HIV and AIDS as we've done previously, amen? And now friends, Let's turn to Jace Lucas, who is in all of all places. Well, he was in Branson, Missouri, and now he's on the road to Springfield, Illinois, and he's not letting distance interfere with online worship. Hey, Jace, good to see you as always. Uh, what do you have to share I, with us this morning? Well, I am really blessed this week, and I think in such a, a time full of emotions and in the middle of a pandemic, there's still a lot of things that we have to, to that bring us a lot of joy. And one of those things is new life. Um, and I'm so excited, as you mentioned earlier, that we're going to be gathering with our new parents group later today. Um, and it's just going to be such a good time of discussion and encouragement and really finding community and celebrating the new lives that are a part of our church family. Um, and of course, that ministry and all of the other ministries of the church are made possible um, through the gifts of the people of the church, everything from your prayers to your time and of course your financial gifts. And at Harmony, we have a really exciting way um, that we give when we are in person in the joy box, woo. <laughs> 
Um, and even though we can't gather in person to give through the box, there's still a lot of ways to give to the church. You can give online at harmonytl.org, or you can text 84321 to give via text. And of course, you can also um, mail your gift to the church office and all of your gifts um, continue the work of the church and help us to have great ministries that reach out to so many different people with different needs and different interests and different things to celebrate during this time. Hey. <laughs> this morning's scripture reading comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had left the Sadducees speechless, they got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Everything else can wait I've come to seek your face So everything else can wait I'm here for you I want to Just be here at your feet just be here on my knees Here in your presence I am complete Jesus, you're all that I Everything else can wait so I've come to seek your face so Everything else can wait I'm here for you I want to just be here at your feet just be here on my knees Yes, here in your presence I am complete Jesus, you're all that I need There's nothing I want more Cause nothing matters more There's nothing I want more, God Cause nothing matters more There's nothing I want more More than you, God There's nothing I want more There's nothing I want more Cause nothing matters more I'll just be here at your feet I'll just be here on my knees 
Yes, here in your presence, I am complete, Jesus. You're all down, just be here at your feet. I'll just be here on my knees. I am complete, Jesus. You're all that I need, Jesus. You're all that I need, Jesus. You're all that I Thank you to Melinda for her wonderful gift of talent and for this beautiful song, Just Be, by Kim Walker-Smith. It's an excellent reminder that being at the feet of Jesus, being on our knees, thankful, humble, and in prayer, being in the empowering and healing presence of Jesus, and by letting his compassionate love and peace wash over us, that's when we're complete. In this moment, we are complete. With today's message, friends, I'm letting you know, heads up, it's going to be hard hitting. For victory or no victory, celebration, tears of joy, it doesn't hide the fact that many, many sorrowful tears have been shed because of the harsh pain and deep division that has been and continues to be experienced widespread by our country. As President-elect Joe Biden said yesterday, it's time to end the grim era of demonization. You know, I'd like to blame all this pain and division on election day, but the uh, massive amount of hurt and deep-seated harm goes well beyond just a day, this week or just a moment in time. For you see, we are a deeply broken people and have been for quite some time, decades. Generations going far, far back. And yeah, I'm, I'm talking about America. Yet admittedly, this certainly goes beyond just the 50 states of our country. Nonetheless, while mind boggling, truth be told, it also lands with a massive thud at the doorsteps of our churches and faith communities, this hurt and harm being caused. And not just outside its doors, but more so inside these very faith communities. What Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said many years ago still holds true. While church worship may not necessarily be what it once was on Sunday morning, pandemic hello, it remains one of the most segregated hours in American life. Now, while Harmony might not see it this way, the fact is that more than eight in 10 congregations are made up of one predominantly racial group. And sadly, it's because most worshipers throughout the land prefer it that way. There we all are, a country divided in the swirl and messiness of hate and hurt while in the midst of a struggle for justice and truth. There's an ugly desire that has occurred in which it's imperative to win at all costs, which is actually at a horrendous cost, dearly costing the most vulnerable in our society. And there's Jesus entering into the mix of all that conflict and more asking, where is your love? Where is your love for God? Where is your love for your neighbor? Where is your love for the most vulnerable? And in the comfort of our bubbled lives, we have unfortunately become complacent with love, where we don't feel, on the whole, the need to even bother to love beyond ourselves. And friends, there is tremendous harm being caused when we choose, choose to not bother to love when we're to love God first and our neighbor the other. This past Wednesday in a meditation shared by Franciscan friar Richard War, something he stated really struck me. This is in a good way, in an inspiring way. Here goes. We must, we must make love one another as I have loved you, the foundation of national respect, the standard 
of our national discernment, the bedrock of both our personal relationships and a civilized society. To be one, we don't need one party, one program, one set of policies. What could be duller, more stagnant, more destructive of the soulfulness it takes to create and preserve the best of the human enterprise than such a narrow-minded view of planetary life? What we need is one heart for the world at large, a single-minded commitment to this more perfect union and one national soul large enough to listen to one another for the sake of the planet, for the sake of us all. Amen. With what I've shared thus far, it leads into this. A few weeks ago, the Reverend Kathy Cooper Ledesma, senior pastor for Hollywood UMC, set up the sermon series that would start after the election. A series for us at Hollywood and Harmony that would center on the three directives stated by John Wesley, who was the founder of the Methodist movement long ago, directives in which we are to follow for God's plan for our lives. These Wesleyan directives are referred to as three simple rules. However, <laughs> they're not so simple. Wish they were. That said, they are in order. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. Again, do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. And this morning, we're focusing on the first rule, do no harm. If we take today's scripture reading from Matthew 22, 34 through 40, the answer is right there on the page. If we love God with all our heart, being, and mind, if we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, guess what? We won't do harm. There's no harm to be done when we live into the fullness of that divine love. But as I said, that's not so simple. For we humans, well, we're an ornery, headstrong bunch. And that goes no matter where you, we land on the spectrum, personally, socially, religiously, economically, politically. If you think about it, the love of which Jesus spoke about when confronting the establishment back in the first century, that love was, and look, still is 2,000 years later, absolutely countercultural to the way humans innately think and act. That commandment of love for God and neighbor is way too often, way too often paid lip service by those in positions of power and privilege. Why? Because they're afraid and they don't want to lose control of what they have or what they perceive they have of the power over another. Or in their feeble, ego-driven minds, the inability, the choice-making to not change but hold with fingernails dug in deep with the way things have always been, which actually has and does cause extensive hurt and harm, thereby leading to destruction and damage, both physical and psychological, plus some. This is indeed deep-seated. We don't have to look any further than 2020 for how deep it goes. The year in which we can certainly ask, where's the love? <laughs> Healthcare is under the knife. Black lives seemingly don't matter. There are men who want to turn back the clock and rule over women's bodies and the choices they make. The LGBTQ plus community is shaking in their boots because of what may be coming down the pike. There is a shaming over wearing masks and a lack of empathy for those who have had COVID-19 and are long haulers still dealing with the after effects of this insidious disease. There is a willful determination to basically do what I darn well please in spite of whatever protocols are in place. And then there's this, the incessant political gameplay that just makes us want to throw up. I mean, harm after harm after harm. And with all this dog pile of harm going on, what does Jesus tell us to do? Well, friends, back then as now, there was Jesus pointing out to the establishment for which they weren't thrilled about, go figure that the aim of the law, this was the religious law for which he stated his purpose was not to abolish, but to fulfill, telling them and us that the aim of the law is to orient one's entire life toward God. However, here it comes, the sticking point. One can't love God without loving what God loves. One can't love God and oppress or exclude any of God's creatures any of God's creatures, even one's enemies. Hmm. 
because to do so causes harm. For those of us who follow Jesus, who say we follow Jesus, it's high time we got on board the Jesus love train to love God and love our neighbor. What does that mean? Well, to get on board the Jesus love train means we're leaving a place we've been for a change to occur in us to embody who we are called to be, heading for a different, a much better, loving, compassionate, merciful, supportive of others' destination. This train ride, though, isn't a free ride. It requires something of us. It requires us to repent for healing to occur, owning the harm we've caused intentionally or not, and to turn toward God with everything we have, everything we hold near and dear. It requires us to reject personal power and wealth for divine power and peace. It requires us to leave our weapons behind, which includes sharp tongues and loose fingers. It requires us to not leave our brains at the train station, but to actively engage our minds in dialogue with one another, even in our differences. It requires us to listen to one another. It requires us to get comfortable with the uncomfortable because that's what God wants. And it requires us to trust God, not man. Is this a train ride worth taking? Is this a train ride? Do you want to be aboard? Or would you rather the Jesus love train leave the station without you while you clutch your pearls and pocketbooks because they make you look pretty and successful in the eyes of the world of possession and power? Now, I believe this train ride is absolutely worth taking. And in my heart, I believe you believe that as well. We just have to take that step forward with courage leaving fear behind, far behind, and embracing the love and the way of Jesus for God's ultimate plan to come into fruition for our lives. As I said earlier, though, not easy. It's not a journey for the faint of heart. But man, oh man, is it worth it. John 13, 34 through 35 shares another love quote from Jesus. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Friends, this kind of love, which does no harm, demands us to trust in God's presence, power, wisdom, and guidance. And it demands our radical obedience to God's leadership. God's leadership. So as we go out into the world, as we interact with others, may all of our actions and even our silence not add injury to any of God's children or to any part of God's creation. Let us bring healing instead of hurt, bring wholeness instead of division, and bring harmony with the ways of Jesus rather than the ways of the world. Amen. Amen. To everyone who has uh, chosen to join us for today's worship service live with harmony, thank you. We're now going to segue into a uh, question of the day and breakout rooms. And this is an opportunity for us to engage with one another for about seven minutes plus. Uh, for those who wish to stay connected for this discussion, please stay online. At this point, though, we'll end the recording for this morning's worship service, and we hope to see you again next Sunday at 1030 a.m. And please share the good news. Share the good news about what's happening at Harmony so others can participate with joy. Peace.